It's only 10 days until Christmas, and it's Riot's last chance to create a balanced meta. They have attempted again with a B patch, so let's take a look at it, and then I'll predict how this will change the meta, and then I'll share my prediction tier list for the next patch. Starting off with the traits, Chemtech is getting nerfed at 3 and buffed at 7 and 9. This is great as 3 Chemtech felt insanely good for how easy it was to fit into multiple different teams. I also love to see that they're making the vertical more worth chasing. Protector Shield is getting a duration nerf, now it lasts no longer than 4 seconds. This sounds like a big deal, but this will only nerf the Protector Cho'Gath. The other Protector units will never have their shields up for more than 2 or 3 seconds anyways, before it gets broken. Now moving on to one cost, Kassadin gets a small nerf. Now his shield won't tank as much damage as before, but he should still be a great main tank in the Protector Kogma comp. He also gets a bug fix that makes him less tanky, but this shouldn't change too much as he never casted much more than twice at 3 star anyways. Darius gets a giant mana nerf. This hurts the early game of Syndicates by a ton. It also makes Bodyguard Frontline weaker in the early game, which is not something Jin likes to see either. There are no changes to the 2 cost units, so we'll move on to the 3 cost units. Cho'Gath is getting gutted. Now he is weaker than he was on the first patch of set 6. I think they're going way too hard on this nerf, and I would put money on him getting buffed next patch after New Year's. With a nerf to his best augments and making him a lot weaker, mutants will yet again suffer. Samira is getting a buff, and now her spell will deal more damage at every level. A nice change as she did fall out of the meta with the last patch. Vex is getting buffed, now her shield is just as powerful as it was on patch 1123. A nice change as Arcanus Lux got hit a little too hard in my opinion, and all the Yordle players love to see this change as well. Moving on to 4 cost units, Fiora gets more healing with her spell. This makes Fiora carry a more attractive option, especially now that Cho'Gath should be gone from the meta. Yone is getting bug fixed, which will result in him getting a giant nerf. In return, they're buffing his stats by a ton to compensate. I think the intention is to keep Yone power neutral, so in theory, Yone should be just as good as he was before. However, what made Yon so great was his ability to bypass the frontline, and since his clone will be a lot weaker now, Yon will deal less damage to the backline, but more damage to the frontline. I think it's a great change as your backline will get insta-melted if you miss position against Yone. Moving on to 5 costs, Galio gets a nerf. Now he is as tanky as he was on the last patch, but his AD is yet again lowered. The Riot dev team seem to really hate Clapio, which is a little sad to see as it is a ton of fun to play, but Clapio is not healthy for the game so I think it's a nice change overall. Akali is getting nerfed, she should still be a great carry as she gets to drop aggro, but she won't be hitting as hard as before. Moving on to items, Archangel Staff gets nerfed, now it takes 5 seconds to get each stack, this is a big nerf to Akali and Lissandra carry, but since the last two patches have been mostly nerfs, fights are going to get slower and slower, which indirectly buffed this item. So it should still be a good item for stall comps, but not as great as it was before. Bramble Vest gets a small nerf, now it gives less armor, but I think this is fine as most people would always build this item in every game. Moving on to augments. Unstable Evolution gives the mutants less stats now. It's a nice way to make sure mutants don't get too much out of hand, but with all the nerfs to Cho'Gath, it's not great to see this. Windfall gets a nice buff when taken on stage 3-3 three, three, and 4-6. I really like this change as I have not picked up this augment at any other points in the game besides 1-4, and having more competitive options is always great. Underdogs now only heals for 10%, and the healing cap is lowered to 150 HP. I think this change is a little reactionary, as this augment was only great on Colossus units. Ascension is getting a small nerf, and now your team only gets 65% extra damage. It is still a boatload of damage if you have a slower paced comp, so it will continue to be good in slower paced metas. There were also two other bug fixes, but both of these shouldn't change anything. Now let's talk about how this will change the meta. While this patch was going on, we saw mutant dominate lobbies whenever they hit Cho'Gath 3 star, and Syndicate Akali would do insanely well if they were able to get Akali online. Chemtech Urgot was not oppressive, but it was a fantastic top 4 comp that you could always do well with, and Sniper Gen and Protector Kogma also did great on this patch. A lot of comps that struggled to kill high HP units struggled on this patch, which is why we saw both Lux, Samira, and non-Akali Assassins fall out of the meta. With all the Colossuses getting nerfed, this opened up a nice window for them to get back in. In addition, this meta was a lot more aggressive, as the Urgot and Mutant players would often roll at level 7 to hit their units, and Syndicate Akali players would always go fast 8 and then stabilize super hard once they hit Akali. I think that fast 8 should be more viable now, as the standard 4 cost carry comps shouldn't get outscaled that hard by Syndicate Akali players anymore. However, if 2 cost rerolls start popping up again, fast 8 might become worse as they get outscaled when people start hitting their Kogma, Samiras, Shakos, and Trundle 3 star units. 
Now let's take a look at my prediction tier list. I think Chemtech Urgot will still be a dominant top 4 comp. You will still not win many games with the comp unless you hit Jinx 2 star, but I put it in S tier as they only got a small nerf, and I think it should be a phenomenal comp for getting top 4 still. In A tier I have Kogma reroll which was a solid top 4 comp last patch, and since only Cassidy got nerfed in it, it should still be great. All the 4 cost carry comps should go up in value, as now they don't get outscaled by Akali anymore, and since the Colossus has got nerfed, they shouldn't get stuck on them either, and they will actually be able to kill units now. I want to note that Challenger Yone might turn into Challenger Fiora. Since Yone got almost completely reworked, it's hard to see how this ends up, but with another Fiora buff, she should be a great unit now, and I want to test out that comp to see how it ends up. I don't think the 2 cost reroll comps from 1123 will return and become dominance ones, but they will become stronger as they all got indirectly buffed through the balance changes. Syndicates will probably want to go for Shaco 3 star now, but since their early game got nerfed with Darius, it's hard to see them getting any higher than B tier. Samira reroll fell off pretty hard, but with a small nerf and the Colossuses not being meta anymore, Samira will be able to proc Challenger more often and actually get through the frontline units. That was my rundown and tier list prediction, since the B patch was a lot bigger than it usually is, I decided to do a full video on it, so now let me know what you think about this. This patch goes live on Tuesday the 14th of December, and the exact time is not revealed at the time of making this video, but it usually goes live around noon in Pacific time, which is around 9pm for Europe and Wednesday morning for Asia and OCE. Thank you so much for watching, if you learned something please leave a like and subscribe to the channel. Comment down below what video you want me to make next, and if you want to get better at TFT, join the Discord. We got over 5,000 other players there who are hungry to climb, and if you want to get coached by me, the information is over on the Discord server as well. So take care, and see you in the next video.